Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another episode of D&D Dynamite 80s. I'm DH, and unfortunately, DC's not going to be with us today. He had something come up. So DC, hope everything works out and see you back here for the next show. Uh, we are joined today with a special guest, singer, songwriter, guitarist, producer, uh, Ricky Bird, uh, Hall of Fame inductee. Mr. Bird, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for inviting me, man. I, I was reading in your background, uh, not only did you perform with Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, but you you performed with a lot of individuals such as Roger Daltney, pa Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, Alice Cooper, Bruce Springsteen, and many more. Uh, one of the questions I had, uh, was there any particular person that when you were performing with them, you just thought to yourself, wow, uh, th I'm really performing with this individual? Yeah, I mean, all of them had that. I mean, first off, um, the bands that I was part of, that I, you know, besides the bands when I was a teenager in Manhattan, you know, playing clubs in Manhattan, uh, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts I played with for about almost 11 years. Uh, and then I went out with Roger Daltrey. I did a record with him. Uh, and I did a tour, like mostly a radio tour with special, with some TV appearances like Letterman and David, um, what was the guy's name? Um, Miller, Dennis Miller. Yes. Yeah, uh, and a couple of others. And then um, I went out with Ian Hunter from Mata Hoople and I did a tour with him of Scandinavia and England. Okay. Um, I did a couple of weeks with John Waite. These are like bands that I was playing with for a minute. Um, and I played with um, Southside Johnny uh, uh, around 2005 for about a year um, when his guitar player went off to play with Bon Jovi. So those are the bands that I kind of played with, you know, and then I put li little bands together, you know, right. on my own. All of the people that you mentioned, that was because I always get asked to be on these uh, charity events. Um, for one thing or another. And um, I'm always sort of in the all-star band. And there's, there's like, it's like the usual suspects. There's like Liberty DeVito from Billy Joel's band and Jeff Carlisi from 38 Special. And, and depending on where it is and what gig it is, we're sort of all on the same gigs. And we get to back up all, you know, people like you were mentioning. And so that's how I get to play with those people and, and do three songs with this one. You know, to some Paul McCartney, I played with obviously at the Rock Hall when we were inducted, well, you know, when I was inducted with Joan and the Blackhearts. But um, back to your question, I think I'm going to say, I mean, it was all amazing, obviously. Mavis Staples and Smokey Robinson were like from another, you know. It's, it's just amazing, yes. And yeah, doing a three songs with Smokey Robinson was ridiculous. Wow. And, and doing I'll Take You There with Mavis, you know. And um, obviously, I, I played with Ringo and, and Paul at the Rock Hall and, and playing with Bruce. And, and so little Steven, you know, who's a friend of mine, you know, getting to play with him. I love um, he's great. I love playing with him. Just, I mean, it just goes on. If you look at the list, I can't even think of all yeah. the cool people I've, I mean, I've done, uh, hold on, you're, uh, I'm coming with um, Sam Moore from Sam and Dave, you know, and I got to play that riff. That's awesome. So was, I've kind of, I've been blessed with all that stuff. I was looking at the list and I just thought, what an iconic career. All of the yeah. individuals you've worked with is just so amazing. It's like, it's just a, such an amazing career. Well, some, some of them were like, a, like they say in baseball, um, he was there for a cup of coffee, right? You know, when they say that. So, so those yeah. events, it was just like one night. It was one night, you know, we played two or three songs, you know, you learn the songs and, and you're sharing a stage with like Elvis Costello, you know, it's, it, right. or my pal Dion, who just had a birthday. That's yeah. awesome. So it's pretty, pretty damn cool. Couldn't ask yeah. for more than that. No, that is really awesome. I mean, just looking at the list, I was just like, wow, I, I just couldn't imagine. Um, well, who would you say would have been your musical influences? Oh, that, that, that's an easy question. So I grew up here in New York. Uh, I was born in the Bronx. I lived there until I was almost 13, maybe. And then we moved to Queens. But the, the, the consistent thing was uh, New York radio was fabulous when I was a kid. Even before it hit, you know, FM radio, we were listening to WMCA and, you know, WABC, you know, the good guys and stuff. Yeah. So my influencer are wide, uh, you know, wide ranged because if you remember on those stations, uh, which doesn't really happen now, you would hear like in the same 10 minutes, you would hear Sinatra, the Kinks, Trini Lopez, yes, you know, Dean Martin, the Rolling Stones, you know, on and on and on, uh, Otis Redding, you know, Wilson Pickett. So I had a chance to really pick and choose what 
you know, not even pick and choose what chose me, I guess, yeah. th those, those musical influences. Now, um, rock and roll, I mean, from the minute I saw the Stones and the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show in 65, when I was like nine, that was like, yes, that's what I want. You know, that's what I want to do. And when I saw them do Jumpin' Jack Flash on Sullivan, oh no, I'm sorry, it wasn't Sullivan. It was like a video from a, a British TV show. Uh, I think it was the Beat Club maybe, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But they had that one iconic video of Jumpin' Jack Flash. They were all wearing like face paint and stuff. And I went, ooh, that looks, that looks kind of edgy. <laughs> I think yeah. I'll, that looks good. I'll, let me try that for a while. Um, and uh, so like I knew immediately. And then, you know, Rod Stewart in the Faces when I was a kid. I just kind of love that. Anything that comes from that Chuck Berry kind yeah. of vibe. And, it's, and in turn, anything that has a bluesy, soulful, you know. But then again, I love bands like Slade, you know, like glam rock and stuff like that. Um, and of course the kinks and, um, but so those guys, like, you know, I collected, obviously like every teenager, we bought rock magazines, right. Which I still have all my rock <laughs> magazines and my, and my baseball cards, by the way. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. So, um, when I would read, I didn't know who like Muddy Waters was or Howlin' Wolf or any of those guys. I, I found out about those guys from reading articles about Jimmy Page and Keith Richards. And they'd say, yeah, well, I remember going to the studio and Muddy Waters was, you know, painting. And I was like, why are you, you know, who's Muddy Waters? And then I would go and look for Muddy Waters records, you know. Um, so that's the, his, you know, that's how history, you, you kind of just, you read whoever you like, you kind of see who they grew up listening to, what made them that, their style. And then you go back and find it. And then I fell in love with old blues. And of course, then I, um, another one of the, the things about having New York radio was like, the Four Tops, The Temptations, Al Green, you know. Yes, definitely. So it's all of that stuff, man. And, and that's yeah. kind of, I mean, that one aspect you mentioned of where you could get it all from one radio station, I kind yeah, of yeah. miss that today, you know. That's, I mean, I know we have different platforms you can log into for certain types of music, but like but, you said, that influenced a whole generation. There's your problem. Like, under Sirius XM is fabulous. Like, I love, I have, you know, I listen to Little Steven's station all the time. Andy plays me, which is great. Uh, <laughs> but he's the only one that you'll hear like, you know, Iggy Pop, and then you'll hear a Sinatra song. Um, and so, but, but they have, see, XM and Sirius have separate stations for each genre, which is great. But then somebody who doesn't go to jump to that, you know, let me see what's on 49, you know, yeah. then they're going to hear that kind of music, like new kids, you know, kids. Yeah, they XM. missed out on so much. Right. Yeah. Now, when you listen to, um, I don't know, Top 40 radio, I don't even know what that is anymore, but it's all new stuff basically. And classic rock stations like Q104, um, which Ken Dash has an old friend of mine. Um, you know, it's Bad Company, it's Journey, it's, you know, Heart, it's us, you know, the Black Hearts. It's, you know, so you really don't get a chance to hear that stuff like when I was a kid. And, and also the other thing was like, I had some friends when I was like 16 years old that they had been to England already. So they came back with all these albums. And actually there was this really cool record store here in, when we moved to Queens that we used to go and we could get, in, remember imports? You couldn't wait to get yes. an import. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it would, it turned me on to all this cool new, like how would I know Slade, right? Like, right. because of the, I said, oh, that, what's, who's that? You know, what's that? Mama, we're all crazy now, you know? Um, but they would, they turned me on to reading uh, British, mag, uh, uh, British, not magazines, but like uh, New Musical Express, NME or Sounds. You know what I mean? Melody yeah. Maker. Melody Maker. Yeah. It was like a yeah. newspaper, but it was a British newspaper and it had all the bands that, you know, all the bands that were big over there that some of them or most of them never hit over here. So what we would do is on Saturdays, we, we would go and we take the train into the city, a bunch of teenagers. And we would go to, you know, the newsstand that we knew had those British papers. And then we would go hang around on West 48th Street, which was uh, all, all where all the music stores were, you know, and, and because we knew, and that, that whole block's gone now, but, and, and that's where I got all my first stuff, my first guitars and all that. But um, we knew that if somebody was playing at the garden or, you know, at the um, Academy of Music on 14th Street, that some, one of those guys would wind up at, you know, Manny's Music or something. So we would be little kids hanging out, not little kids, but teenagers hanging out right. in front waiting for like Jimmy Page or 
That's Leslie a, West to yeah. you know somebody like Steve Marriott. Yeah, that it's amazing. That, and you know, the record shops and all that's another thing that there's just so much change. I mean, today's youth doesn't get that album cover art and everything that was involved in that. So I mean, it's just it, it's a different industry. Uh, yeah, but, but they do say that vinyl is vinyl outsold um, CDs. Now that's not saying much because CDs didn't sell much. Right. But, but still, you know, people are loving. I don't know if it's kids or if, if it's us, this demographic, or you know, like I always love to go into like a secondhand store and dig through their vinyl mm -hmm. and see, you know, if there's something. Oh, look, cool, man, the second Zeppelin record or something. Yeah, and fine. but I, I do agree. The thing that's missed, especially I have a 19 year old daughter, you know, going into a record store and doing this thing. Yep, <laughs> that's not a dog paddle for hours. <laughs> for hours, yeah, and saying, well, that's a cool. Co and and sometimes you'd buy stuff based on the yeah. cover. Yeah. But I try to do, you know, I'm very, when I do my records, this is like my third record CD. Um, I take a lot of care in, in, you know, taking a good, you know, picture or whatever it is. In fact, my, my daughter took the pictures on, on the Sobering Times record, my latest. And I always write really cool liner notes because that was a big thing for me yes. when I was a kid. I love liner notes. So and, I take time. Yes. And speaking of Sobering Times, if you don't mind, yes. I want to kind of turn the focus uh, yes, to your let's new do that. You now. Uh, first off, let me say, amazing album. Thank you. Uh, when DC shared it with me and I listened uh, to I Come Back Stronger, my first thought before he told me anything about the song, he wanted just to get my impression on it. My first thought was, this is like an anthem for the world at this point from the things we've talked so. And just hearing that song and I think back and, and we all go through times, uh, but just the words of the song and the meaning of the song is just like so uplifting. It's like, you know what? We're going to be okay. So I really appreciate you. Oh, thanks, for that. You know, I write these, these last two records are, um, I've been in long-term recovery, 34 years coming up in September. And um, I do these records for people that are struggling with all kinds of addictions. Um, you know, and so it, the, the lyrics, the rock, the, the music's just straight up rock and roll, of course but uh, the lyrics are about uh, addiction and recovery and hope and you know change the life to the better but i wanted to on this record like in that particular song i come back stronger which by the way on youtube uh, you could see the video if you go to my channel yeah. um i wanted it to be a little bit wider you know so there's no mention of any booze or anything in that song i just wanted to be for people that are struggling you know and um yeah a lot, a lot of people love that record so it, yay it, <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, and especially with what, not just our country, but what the world's been through with the pandemic and everything else that's been going on. Yeah, it's been on. quite a mess. It, it really has. And to be honest with you, to hear something like this, I mean, it kind of, I know it may sound kind of corny, but it provides hope for everyone, you know? So I really appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate you appreciating it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess my question on that would be how, how does it feel or maybe the process that you went through when you were developing these strums that were based on such a, a strong personal aspect and just knowing the impact they've had in the world and, and the feedback you're getting and, and the help you've actually provided through music? I guess, I, I guess a type of therapy is what I would call it for folks. Well, I, I mean, this, this is now we're into a, a different chapter. For the last nine years, I've been going around to treatment facilities, um, you know, a lot in this, in, in the New York vicinity, but uh, around the country. And um, I've been doing recovery music groups. And so that's where all these songs came from. And every one of them. I started with like one song, like the, the, the album before this, um, uh, Clean Getaway, the, the final song and that is called Broken. Broken is a place. That was the first song that was written uh, myself and my friend Richie Supa. And um, I, I, I recorded it, you know, quick, like home studio thing. And I put it out, not even put, I put it online and I, I started getting messages from people, you know, you told my story, you know. So then I started to write these songs and I wrote a few of them. And then I reached out a treatment facility that I, I was, uh, had an acquaintance with from sort of, once again, charity events. And um, I said, how about if I come in with my acoustic guitar and do like music groups? And, and I started with a couple of songs, you know, 
and and I built it and I kept writing these songs. And the response I got from the clients in, in, in treatment is what you're talking about, right? Like I, I try to hit on uh, all aspects of all of these things. And um, some of the subject matter I get because my groups are kind of interactive. Like I ask questions or if anybody has a question and I mentally make a note of subject stuff that they, they may mention, I go home and I go, okay, let me write about this. You know, so, and, um, and that's where the songs come from. So, you know. Well, it's truly amazing. And like I said, to me, for it to be coming out at this time, is just, I mean, it's just amazing what I think this song is going to help people through, uh, throughout the world. Well, I got to do my first, um, obviously like everybody else, I was not doing anything for over a year, but I, I did my first live, uh, I, let's call it, a, yeah, it was a recovery music group. It was way out in Long Island and it was at a sober house. Well, it wasn't in the sober house because that's small. It, they did it in a big church basement, like cafeteria. Okay. And there were about 125 something clients, new, new, uh, newly in recovery. And I got to play songs from both of the records. And it was amazing for me to, to be out amongst people again and to see the looks on the people's faces. And, you know, uh, so yeah. hopefully uh, if everybody doesn't screw this up, <laughs> uh, which they might, uh, we may, you know, get to all be playing again live, you know, if everybody good. doesn't do stuff too fast. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I, I, I have the same worry that you do on that, but I would love to. And if you ever make it down into the Nashville area, I'd love to come see you play live. Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Bird, if you would, if you will share uh, any upcoming events you have with our listeners or well, any information. Where the, they the main come. thing is, is if you're interested in, um, if you go to YouTube, to my YouTube channel and just subscribe to it because I'm late in the game, man. It's a pitiful 200 and some odd people. Um, you know, my kid, my daughter kept saying, you got to get, you got to do more on YouTube. I'm like, oh man, not another one. <laughs> but um, you could, you could listen to all the songs on, from Sobering Times and Clean Getaway, by the way. I have playlists. So you just go to the, you know, awesome. if you're interested in, in uh, helping the cause, which means if you know if you purchase a record, uh, a CD, uh, you get a uh, well, you get a free free digital download of it also, and you, and also we have these clean getaway T-shirts that I'm I'm throwing in the package, uh, but um, that would be helpful to the cause because it it helps me, um, you know, and nobody's really making money from selling records anymore. If you, especially if you're not on the road, that's where people make money, but but what helps it it helps me do another record and keeps helping me do these records, and also it helps me. Uh, to afford to give away these CDs when I go to the treatment facilities, because that's something else I do. Okay, awesome. So you, yep. just go to, you just go to, um, if you want to just listen first, go to YouTube if, or Spotify, I think. And if you want to help me out and um, spread the mess, help me spread the message, just go to rickybird.com, bro. It's, it's really easy. R-I-C-K-Y-B-Y-R-D. And you'll purchase a signed copy. Of course, it's on Amazon and all that other stuff. But if you want a signed copy, you come to my website. Perfect. Well, Mr. Bird, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you joining us here. Folks, please go to, to the website, rickybird.com, and let's make these purchases and help out. I know uh, I'm going to do that. And we're also, we'll go ahead, we're going to list everything up on our uh, pages and podcasts and uh, on Twitter for you. And again, all I, can I appreciate say, it. all I can say is thank you for coming on the program, number one. Sure. More importantly, Thank you for what you do because these the, these songs that off this album that I've heard and I'm gonna go back and check out even more, truly amazing work and I think it's just perfect for these times. Listen to um, um, the final song on the record, just like you. Um, I wrote for the newcomers, you know. In other words, people that are just making the decision to to you know change, um, and and you know even when I sing it. I get the chills, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to express to them that I was just like them, you know, like, even though I've been around a long time in recovery, it's like, no, dude, trust me. I walked in the same door you did, man, <laughs> you know, so that, that's, uh, that's a very special song on the record. And um, as far as playing, you know, I have nothing, I have like online stuff, Zoom events. In fact, Thursday, I'm doing a Zoom with recovery organizations and I have some stuff in the works for the fall. Uh, where I'll be able to travel around the country and do treatment facilities if everything is cool. 
Right. And hopefully. You know? I'll be... Yeah, man. I'd hate, I'd hate to take two steps back. Right. That's it. But hey, man, it's in everybody's hands, you know? It is. And, and everybody, it's... please take the precaution, you know? Yeah. So that's all right, man. I really appreciate it, Mr. Bird, again. And again, I just want to say thank you so much. And folks, make sure check out the YouTube channel and go to rickybird.com and let's help that cause because these songs are amazing and, and this is just this is just a great uh, platform uh, that's helping a lot of people. So Mr. Bird, again, I appreciate it. Thanks, bro. Have a great evening. You too, man. Bye-bye. Yes.